Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, behind the camera is Alex, and today we are going to show you why you should be visiting the Amalfi Coast. The Amalfi Coast is a 50 kilometer stretch of coastline along the south of the Sorrento Peninsula, between Punta Capanella and Vietri Sulla Mare. A popular holiday destination famous for its striking coastline and picturesque seaside towns. In this video, we will show what there is to do as well as what to expect when visiting the famous Amalfi Coast. We decided to base ourselves in the city of Pompeii, which is far less expensive than many of the famous coastal towns and in a great location for exploring Italy's Campania region. First on our list of things to do is to drive the Amalfi Coast yourself, either by car or by bike. I am so glad that we've got this car. Ooh, the views as you drive up, these winding roads are absolutely nuts. You've got the views of Pompeii and Vesuvius just over there. <laughs> like Outrageous. today is going to be a great day. Italian food, <laughs> beaches, beautiful nature. I don't think I could ask for any more. There are a ton of places to pull over and take in the view on this road, which I'm very grateful for because look at it, it's ridiculous. And also the, the thing that strikes me most is how flat it is. You have these huge, huge mountains and hills surrounding it, but all in between is just, it's like um, when you have a plaster and they just kind of flatten everything out at the end. And it's so it's like very... oddly satisfying. Any geologist watching, why? Why does this happen? This isn't the only place we've seen it like this. We were recently in Bavaria and it's exactly the same. You've got these huge mountains and then all this flat land in between it. What's going on? There are many tour buses that can take you around the Amalfi Coast, but nothing compares to exploring at your own pace. And, as you may notice, the roads can be a little tricky for buses to manoeuvre. Make sure if you do rent a car that you choose a small one. <laughs> <laughs> Italy was not made for big cars. <laughs> we decided to drive clockwise from Pompeii, starting in the small town of Minori and ending in the larger, more popular town of Sorrento. We thought this way made more sense as you get to start off the day with incredible views of Vesuvius and the water of the Amalfi Coast slowly revealed to you through a sea of lush green mountainside. Ending the day with the atmosphere of a busier place with plenty of options for food and drink. The Amalfi Coast has been listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is full of gorgeous historical towns to explore. Be sure to stop at some of the smaller towns along the coast, and not only the popular ones like Sorrento or Positano. We chose the towns of Minori and Atrani because they're pretty close together, they're also pretty quiet, and look at these views. The town of Atrani is the second smallest town in Italy, with only 880 inhabitants and located in the Valley of the Dragon. The name comes from legends of a fire-breathing dragon who would hide in the valley and less than a 10 minute drive from the town of Minori. This is off season right now. So bear in mind, if you come here, you're gonna be spending a lot of time looking for parking spaces. It's only one euro to park here for an hour. But now after the ordeal of trying to find somewhere to park, I think we just stay here the whole day. <laughs> we had plans to show you loads of things, but instead you're just seeing this part. <laughs> Historically a vacation spot for the Imperial Roman aristocracy, Minori is now a place for travellers seeking sun, sea and some of Italy's most delicious pastries. No trip to the Amalfi Coast is complete without stopping at Sal de Riso's cafe. Sal de Riso is well known as the south of Italy's best pastry chef, so I'm expecting good things from him. We've ordered a trio of treats today. Lemons are very popular here, so there are a bunch of different desserts with lemon in them. We've gone for this one because we've heard that it's a bit of a specialty here. No idea what to expect from it though, it's a little ambiguous. But it's starting to melt, so I feel like we should just try it. Okay, it looks like a lemon sponge with some kind of moussey center and creaminess on the outside. That's about as much as I can get for descriptions. Let's see what it tastes like. I've died and gone to lemon heaven. You should have said I've died and gone to lemon. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's so light and so creamy and so lemony and nice and cold as well. Like it's quite refreshing. 
Oh my goodness. I'm addicted to cheesecakes almost as much as I love sausages. And I see myself as a bit of a cheesecake connoisseur and I'm not easy to please. And especially when I come to a, let's face it, pretentious place like this, I'm expecting a lot. When they have some weird, actually that's not food, that's, what is it? A weird sugar thing. <laughs> Well, really, I'm expecting a lot. I couldn't say no to a berry cheesecake here. I know what I like with my cheesecakes. I like them quite crumbly. First impressions, it looks good. It has the consistency I like. Come on. Some of the best cheesecakes I've ever had were in New York. Oh, I don't know. It could really? be recency bias, but it could be this one. 10 out of 10. Wow. Not, coming from me. Wow. 10 out of 10. That never happens. That, that is, <laughs> that is it. That is the cheesecake. It's the cheesecake that you were looking for, my friend. It's here, in the south of Italy. So far we're two for two, but we've ordered three. I have no idea what to expect from this. I think they said on the menu it was a Sicilian cannolo. I don't know how that differs from other cannolos, um, but it looks like there's a pistachio crust on the outside, judging by the color. Okay, I'm just gonna pick it up. I don't care how fancy this place is. Mmm, sweet. It's crunchy, but it's creamy, and it's bloody delicious. <laughs> We've come to a grotto or an underground cave, which we've read is a good alternative to the blue grotto in Capri. So if you don't have time, this could be a good alternative. Huge word of warning, I have read very, very mixed reviews about this place. So we're actually gonna go and find out now if it's worth checking out. You get an elevator down from the cove, no steps. From the entrance, what you can see inside the cave is essentially the tour area. So it looks like the boat just does a circle in that area for like 20 minutes and it's five euros per person to do that trip. You may or may not think that's worthwhile for yourself. Um, for us, especially during COVID times, it seemed a little weird that everyone was kind of on the boat, just side by side, kind of shoulder to shoulder. Uh, especially as most places you have like the one or one and a half meter distancing rule doesn't seem to be applied down there so yeah maybe if you're visiting outside of covid times that could look cool to you but for us as well the water did not rival that of what we've seen in the grotto in capri so i think we're going to skip this one next up we try to visit the fjord of furore dubbed italy's only fjord but is actually a ria a narrow gorge cutting inland from the sea we'd recommend visiting by boat rather than by car due to the increasingly frustrating parking situation. I am baffled of how this place functions. It's a Thursday in October and it's busy. Well, of course it's gonna be busy, it's absolutely beautiful, but how does it function during the summer? Like this place was not built for tourists. Maybe it was completely built for tourists, but not taking into account that people need to park somewhere. That is why so many people are driving around on Vespers. Probably a tip for you, get a Vespa. The next stop has to be Positano, arguably the most famous stop along the Amalfi Coast. Stay tuned for our full Positano video to see more. I recommend for you to go to one of the higher up cafes and bars, grab yourself a drink and some snacks and take in the view. Carrying on our journey, the outskirts of Sorrento offer an interesting choice for swimming. The Regina Giovanna Bath is a remote swimming hole set alongside rocky cliff edges and ancient ruins of a Roman villa. It is located just a 10 minute drive from Sorrento and can be accessed only by private boat or on foot, making it far less crowded than the other swimming spots around the area. To get there, we walked about one kilometer down a footpath from the coastal road to the water's edge. This is also the perfect place for an impromptu photo shoot for your Instagram or a YouTube thumbnail to make sure all those perverts click. 
If you'd have told me one week ago that swimming in Roman ruins in Sorrento is a possibility, I would have snapped your hand off and said that it's got to be the best, most unique thing I've ever heard of in my travels if it hadn't have been for in a previous video where we stumbled across ruins that we got to swim in and it was way better than this. Taking nothing away from this, this is great. If you're in the area, definitely check it out. But if you're in Salento, very easy to confuse with Sorrento, <laughs> then that has got to be the top of your bucket list. For those of you wondering about the temperature of the water, it is currently October and it is lovely for swimming in still. A little bit refreshing when you get in, but that's it, it's really nice. Now we're going to go to Sorrento where we're going to spend our evening, hopefully with sunset overlooking that. Our final stop of the day was Sorrento, a popular seaside town overlooking the Bay of Naples. En route to the waterfront, we stumbled across the Valley of the Mills. The flour mills built in the 13th century were abandoned in the 40s after the industry became largely obsolete. Does anyone else get a profound sense of comfort when they see that the power of nature overtaking everything? So no matter how much we f up this planet, if we're going to nuke ourselves to death, if it's going to be climate change, nature is here to take over and sweep up our mess. This has to be the best place to watch sunset in Sorrento. We have a view of Mount Vesuvius in the background. We've got ourselves some food and some beers for less than five euros and the park itself is free. Absolute bargain. No trip to Sorrento will be complete without trying its biggest export. That's right, Lemoncello. Al's offered to drive, so I get to- Kindly. <laughs> kindly offered Tell to- Tell them how kind I am. <laughs> Al's kindly offered to drive, so I get to be the one to drink it, which is great, because I love all things lemon. Now, preface, I have no idea what to look for when it comes to buying limoncello. So I just picked up the first bottle I saw. I think um, go to the main center of place, mm. go for the most touristy looking place, yep. and pick one from there. Yeah, a good tip. I mean, they've even written Sorrento on the front. Lovely. OK. I mean, there's, there's bits of glue and stuff <laughs> stuck to the bottle. It's all right, it'll add to the flavor. Oh, it smells nice. OK, cheers. like lemon drops it's literally like liquid sweets oh I like this a lot if you like your alcohol and you like your lemons make sure you get it we hope this video has given you some ideas of what to do whilst visiting the beautiful Amalfi Coast now what all youtubers say come on smash the like button like 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 please please it means so we don't care Stop if you it. like it or not we don't <laughs> um, please do though um subscribe if you haven't already make sure you hit the notification bell to be notified of other italy videos leave a comment mm -hmm. this place it really does look as good as it looks on camera. It does. Where have you been that looks just as good as the pictures? The only thing we would say about this place, if you're coming to visit, possibly don't come during the main summer months because it was so busy on a Thursday in October right now. Yeah, we could only imagine what would happen in the middle of summer, but just, you've been warned, okay? <laughs> so, nothing left to do in this beautiful part of Sorrento and Italy. Yes. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time and beans out! next time on Travel Beans. When I found out that this place was a playground for the fashion icons and the rich and the famous, I grabbed the only shirt that I owned and got changed immediately. <laughs>